Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Gebo the Shaman, and today we are talking about uh, the two, you know, two versions of, you know, uh, being quote-unquote saved or uh, self-transformation or versus the religious point of that or like um, the essentially uh, spiritual awakening, things like that, versus self-transformation and, you know, being, as the Christians put it, being, you know, saved or things like that. So, yeah, um, so essentially the difference there is, you know, you're doing it yourself kind of thing. So the basically Christians rely on their their uh, fictitious god to to save them uh, and think about that like why why do people need saving why do Christians believe they need saving that's because they have the fundamental belief that they are um, they're basically not perfect they're not good enough they're evil they are unclean basically they need saving they need repentance and things like that well um you know it's it's this fundamental belief of you know self-hatred they say even bef even because just because we were born we were born into quote-unquote sin so why is that um because so that comes with comes from a fundamental belief that you know we're bad people or you know having our you know animalistic nature or tendencies makes us evil or unworthy or something like that so but on the other hand contrary to you know the christian christian faith and abrahamic religions um we have what's called, um, you know, we have the old Norse belief that was basically those who die in battle go to Valhalla, and um, you know it's all about um, it's all about you know doing it for yourself, improving yourself, quote unquote saving yourself. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, essentially, that's the difference. So, you know, it says in the Old Norse texts that, uh, that Odin sacrificed himself, or sacrificed his self, small s, to his self, big s. So, essentially, what he did on that tree of life, that that's, you know, there's symbolism in, in that the tree of life, hanging upside down on the tree of life, that is, um, essentially, the tree of life is the spinal column and the chakras. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, but, um, you know, essentially, that means that he had to, you know, it, allow his kundalini to rise and I guess that it means like because essentially the um, kundalini lies in your spinal cord in the well in the base of your spine the um, coccyx region and um, essentially that you know that is in charge of our our spiritual maturity our psychological maturity and things like that so when I Odin sacrificed his self to his self, um, that meant that he, he had to, you know, die to his old beliefs and assumptions and things like that about himself and, you know, and mature and evolve into the higher self, into, because he basically went from being a dwarf to being a, uh, what's called the king of the gods. You know, he went from being a dwarf to the all-father. Um, so, essentially there's this very, 
sharp distinction between Jesus and Odin. Um, Jesus is there to, you know, say, oh, you, well, you, you don't know what you're doing. You're, uh, stupid and you can't save yourself. <laughs> you can't improve yourself. You can't transform yourself. So here, little, little, stupid little peasant, I'll do it for you. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, Odin says, well, do it yourself. I did it. You can do it too. So that's why I tend to go with Odin. So uh, the point is with that is um, that we don't need uh, somebody to save us. We are fully capable of of improving ourselves in uh, different ways and you know, self-improvement, self-transformation, um, things like that. So, you know, it's... Human beings have this natural, well, since since the advent of um, of Abrahamic religion, Christians or you know people have this um, self hatred of themselves. They think less. They think less of themselves. They think they need um, need grace. Need saving. Need something in order to be, you know, accepted, in order to be whole, um, you know, and that's just the thing, like, they have organized religion because, um, you know, so everyone can feel accepted and whole. And um, so in, in a sense, it's, you know, it's it kind of buying into the narrative to be accepted you know, accepting a faith to be in the in crowd, in the know, in the, you know, accepted by people. But, like, if you, if you really look at it, most people just do that and buy into it because that's how they were raised. That was the belief system that they were raised with, so they didn't have the courage to look outside of that. They just went along to get along, you know? And, and it, you know, that's the safe thing to do. It takes courage to actually have an open mind and look at things differently and see what the real truth is. Investigate, do your own research. So, we have these two we have these two parallel competing narratives one is that you need a you need a savior one is that you're you're sinful you're stupid you're not good enough and all this crap that's self devaluation and the other one is well do it yourself you can you can transform yourself you don't need a savior you don't need um you know course difference between a savior who does it for you and a teacher or a guru or a mentor or a guide is somebody who is on that path to self-transformation and they're just a few steps ahead of you a savior says oh i'll take your you know your sin and whatever and do it for you a mentor or a teacher teaches you how to do it for yourself so essentially with these with these two parallel competing uh narratives um we have the choice to make do you want to play the safe road go down the safe path and just do what we've been taught what our family has been believing for many years all this stuff so do we want to do that or do we want to forge our own path, which takes courage and discipline and bravery and because nobody said that this transformation journey would be easy. You know, Odin, um, he hung 
upside down for nine days and nine nights. And then the fi finally the, the runes appeared uh, below him. And it says that Odin reached down and screaming he took them up. Screaming he, he learned about the nature of reality, the, uh, you know, higher consciousness, the energies behind everything and things like that. And this is why he can then trans, you know, um, traverse the nine worlds of the rune tree, or the, the world tree. So, you know, it's, you know, so essentially he's, it says that screaming he took the runes up. Um, that is because this transformation journey is extremely, uh, emotional. It is, you know, you think about that, you have to sacrifice your little self to your bigger self. You have to sacrifice your, your ego to your higher self, to your higher spiritual nature. So those distinctions are important. And, you know, it's... So I just, uh, you know, I'm going through my own transformation right now. I'm doing my 12-step work. I am, um, you know, uh, learning more about my resentments and um, things like that and um, you know even my part in those resentments my fault um, the things that I did to you know start or per perpetuate those um, resentments and so it really you know resentments are, are things that you hold on to that you think, well, you've been wronged and uh, things like that, but really, um, resentments come from uh, defects of character. Because, let's say, your father abused you, and you're resentful about them. Well, um, if you had perfect self-esteem and perfect self-love and um, you know all, all that stuff it's like you probably wouldn't care because you think you would think higher of yourself you think well yeah my dad you know abused me or whatever but um, I'm okay you know I have value I have worth I have um, you know um, value, so essentially, essentially that, that wrong or that hurt by the person who hurt you or abused you would be dulled by your strong sense of self and your self-esteem and things like that. So essentially working through these and discovering a lot about myself, you know, um, a defect of character doesn't have to be something that is, you know, bad or, or that you can, or that you should shame yourself for. It's just, this is where you are. You know, it's just showing you this is where you are. So, when we work on ourselves, it is imperative to have, you know, self-compassion but also have the the strength of character to you know actually do the work and continue it um you know so a lot of times people say oh yeah I, i'm working on myself and i you know i um i'm doing these things and working on myself and stuff but it's really hard unless you have a teacher unless you have 
a mentor, someone who is there for you to, you know, walk you through this process. Um, it can be really difficult. I mean, in 12-step programs, we have what's called sponsors. They're basically people who have worked the steps before and they walk you through them. So, you know, this journey of self-transformation and self, um, you know, growth and uh, maturity and, um, yeah, growth and maturity and discipline and things like that, this journey cannot be done alone. We need people to help us. So, I can help you through several means. I have Qigong courses that you can do every single day. Um, I, I have, they also incorporate Kundalini Yoga, so that's also very important. And, um, yeah, the Kundalini that rises from the base of your spine up the spine, and it basically, um, the more that you cleanse that, um, it's, it's not like you're building kundalini, it's not like you're cultivating kundalini. It's more like when you do kundalini yoga, you're, you're cleansing that, the kundalini energy of your spine. And once that goes up to your third eye and your crown chakra, um, you'll have greater self-awareness. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, it's really, really interesting how all these work, all these things work, you know, we're the only creature on planet Earth that has this ability to have self-awareness and, um, and, you know, just, uh, psychological maturity and things like that, so, it's really interesting, so. Anyway, I would highly recommend checking out the, Kun, uh, the Qigong courses. I have uh, my self transformation course and the the um, co uh, cosmic Qigong. So check those out. And then we have the astrology certification course. And um, so if you take that course, I'll give you a free website and. Um, you can actually pay, take payments on that website, so it makes it very easy just to refer people to that website. And not, not only that, I'll even promote you on the channel and things like that, so, yeah. Um, and then we have the astrology certification course, that's what I talked about, and then we have the astrology readings. So if you want an astrology reading from me, then you can go to my website, gabotheshaman.com. Um, and yeah, uh, so I also do birth time rectification, which is basically finding out your exact time of birth based on your Vedic astrology chart. And, um, so if you don't know your exact birth time, then that would be a good thing to look into. Alright, and then we have the rune readings, which basically tells you about your near, near future and your present. Uh, what's going on with you presently and what's to come in the near future So if you're interested in that go to my website gilbertshaman.com and We have also career coaching and life coaching so um, So that's that's some services that I offer if you like if you'd like me to mentor you and work with you and uh, you know help you to achieve what you want to to achieve in life and things like that, then um, I would highly recommend booking a session with me for career coaching or life coaching. So, yeah. And then we have um, the trauma healing course, which is essentially the emotional awareness course. Basically, helps you become more aware of your emotions. And when you are, when you're more aware of your emotions, you can begin to heal from any trauma that any trauma that came up for you in you know childhood and things like that um so yeah the one um you know a lot of times when we have when we have trauma we're basically running away from our emotions running away from our emotions and feelings and so 
actually looking at the feelings and feeling them um, really helps. And also, um, you know, um, basically, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Uh, there's a there's a affirmation that I use all the time that's basically says even though I have this feeling I thoroughly and completely love and accept myself and that's just basically allowing myself to have the feeling and you know love myself through it because it, we have this concept in our heads a lot of times when we're when we have trauma and stuff like that that we can't feel our feelings that it's totally unsafe to feel anything. So we get into this dissociative mode and uh, just uh, kind of um, robotic and just kind of dissociate. So, um, but the whole process is basically just allowing you to feel your feelings and that's it, you know, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> All right, um, it's, well, it's simple, but not easy. <laughs> I should put it that way. And then, of course, we have my book, Tantric Secrets of Vedic Astrology. You can check that out. And, um, yeah, so it's a book about Tantric Secrets of Vedic Astrology. <laughs> um, essentially using your chart to um, do mantras and rituals and things like that, Tantric practices. So, yeah, um, if you're interested in that, check that out. It's at the first link below, or you can find it on my website, getwaltashaman.com. Alright, so yeah, alright, we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.